Hey everyone, Paul from Green Dragon Hydroponics. Um, here today, I wanted to go a little bit more in depth on the Miwa uh, Hub. This thing is a really powerful device for 200 bucks. Um, so I just wanted to highlight it and give you a full detailed walkthrough of the app and what it can do. So um, stick with us and I'll get into it. Just like in a normal power strip, uh, you have four outlets here. There's a uh, power button and then a USB sensor that that's a wire that will drop to your canopy level. And then uh, these outlets are all customizable. So um, um, what they highlight here, lights, fans, watering pump, heater, cooler, um, humidifier, dehu, and then the sensor will do um, temperature, RH, and lighting. And um, so you can see the app has a BPD in it, which I will um, do a screen share now and um, we'll go through that. All right, so this is the dashboard of the app. Um, see here, you just have four different outlets. Uh, each, of the, each of these are configured to different devices. Um, and then grow data, you have VPD, temperature, humidity, um, dew point, and whether your light is on or off. Um, scroll down this will tell you uh, once you load a recipe what cycle um, or what stage you're in based on what recipes you load um, and then let's see let's go here to settings and then outlet configuration this is where you choose what you want on each outlet so uh, you can see this one we have a light a humidifier an AC and a heater and um, the one limitation to the Niwa or um, shouldn't say limitation because you can work around it is the amperage so the total um, amperage of the strip is 15 amps and then each outlet is 10 amps so um, you can't have more than a total of 15 amps on the entire strip so uh, if you want to um, put more load on it. Maybe you have an AC, actually this AC here is 1500 watts. So um, uh, you need to add a relay into there. And uh, I'll put the link in the description for the relay if you needed to add a heavier load onto here. Um, let's go through the actual recipes first and then we'll come back to the settings. I'll show you some details there. But um, click on recipes and you see you have I have a couple different recipes here and this is right now the veg recipe is loaded onto this app so um can go here and see the details of what i have in here right now the lights on a 18 hour cycle so starts at six o'clock in the morning obviously you can change those and it ends at um at midnight uh watering cycles that's for pumps, which I don't have any pumps uh, connected to this. So uh, let's see. And then the climate is really what's important to me. This is a vegetative space. So um, I want to make sure that my VPD is dialed in so that the plants transpire properly and they're taking up nutrients properly. And my, so my target VPD on the first cycle, which is when the lights are on, is one uh, 1.0, putting the humidity and the temperature at um, 50 and 77. So the heater, the AC, whatever you have connected is going to control the environment to keep that target VPD of one. And then the other cycle I have loaded on onto here is when the lights are off. And when the lights are off, VPD doesn't matter. Um, plants aren't transpiring. So really what I uh, change here is the humidity and temperature where I don't really want huge swings over 10 degrees or 10% when the lights turn off. So I do like some, um, I like a little bit drier environment so that you don't invite uh, mold and mildew and things like that. So I drop my humidity about 5% and allow them to, uh, and then the target temperature, uh, five degrees. So, um, that puts the VPD a little bit lower, but um, like I said, it doesn't, VPD doesn't matter when the lights are off. 
Um, yeah, like I said, you can create your own recipe, which actually we'll do right now. I have two different ones right now. And then let's just make a bloom recipe or even say like a bloom week one to two, because you can make a recipe for any given week or any given time frame and go into here and we're going to add a light cycle. So let's say, let's keep it at 6 a.m. Lights on. And then go to 6 p.m. Then we'll go to climate. And now for our, our bloom, I usually taper the VPD. So I'll try to keep warmer temps, a little bit more humidity in the early bloom. So let me see. Um, this will be same thing from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Here's where you can choose how you, um, what's most important, or like if you're adjusting these and you say your VPD is most important, um, it actually calculates it for you. So we're just gonna increase this to 1.3 and then humidity. You see something's unreasonable, like right now, maybe I would like, 60% humidity but with that VPD that puts my temperature at 95 um, which doesn't really make sense so I'm going to lower the humidity but I do like my early on or I do like my temps in the 80s if you're running LEDs you can run it a little bit harder or hotter especially if you're using CO2 um, so let's just say there for now and um you can adjust if needed, maybe, let's see, 1.4 would bring it a little bit higher temp. I'll leave it at 1.3. So um, that should do that. Finish and save. So now we have a, a um, say you're in veg and you wanna switch to bloom, you just load this recipe and the rest is history. Um, so other things, do you have like a stats section, which it's just amazing for 200 bucks, you're getting all of this, um, which goes down to one month. You can see your stats, um, your highs, lows, and um, even dew point. So you know that if your temperature is dropping below dew point, then that's obviously you'll get dew and that's dangerous for um, mold. Other cool features, you go back into settings, you have an alarm for temperatures, relative humidity, or whether your light shuts off. Oh, one limit, another limitation on this is that it has to run on 2.4 gigahertz ethernet. Um, we've already ran into that problem where uh, an internet service provider doesn't separate the, the bandwidths. Um, so if you have an ISP that only does one bandwidth, then Niwa probably won't work for you. But most companies offer 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, so um, shouldn't be an issue. But um, other things in here, the VPD leaf temperature offset. If you're really getting technical, then you can go and buy an infrared thermometer and take the temperature of the leaf. And uh, you see I have mine set at not minus 6, which is a pretty significant difference um, from you know the, the environment temperature and the leaf temperature and the leaf temperature is where you want to be so um, and then lastly this is for calibrating your temperature and relative humidity um, devices so anytime you're doing that take a separate uh, thermo hygrometer or a couple of them as many as you possibly can and get readings allow them to sit in the room for 24 hours so that the sensors fully acclimate to that environment and then take an average of all of your readings or whatever readings and then you can um, adjust the RH and temp. I actually did this with the Niwa and through all my, I had two thermometers, um, a uh, Pulse, Pulse um, the regular Pulse Pro. So I had four readings and the Niwa actually, the average was only off by one degree and none on the humidity. So it shows you that the temperature and the sensors are accurate and 
Um, I don't know. I can't. I just can't say enough about it for now. I've already heard that they're going to be adding in CO2. So that's probably something that like you'd swap out a sensor and um, that would be updated in the app. So really looking forward to that. Um, don't quote me on it, but I uh, heard from a bird. So um, let me see what else. Uh, calibrate light calibration haven't done it but uh and then support so that's um the entire thing you have uh messages or notifications if anything pops up but um yeah really great app and great product also great customers customer support that i've seen so far so um yeah if you need to buy one check out our website greendragonhydroponics.com or stop in the store and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and leave a like, comment, subscribe. All right. Talk to you on the next one.